Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Chef to Watch. I'm your host, Tara Fitzpatrick, and today we have a special treat. We've got Dave McHugh from Point Loma Nazarene University, way out in California. Hi, Dave. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. So we are Thanks, Tara. You know, uh, well, we've... <laughs> We've met, we've gone back before and done, done a few things together and and, uh, and excited to, to chat today and talk about some relevant things that are happening in the industry. Totally. It's so true. And um, I first met Dave at um, a UMass conference put on by the great Ken Tung. And I kind of was new to the industry and I sort of just latched on to this group of chefs that was having so much fun and they kind of like allowed me to hang out with them and that was the San Diego crew and this was from a different college this was San Diego State and it was just such a fun group of people and Dave was there at the center of it all so <laughs> very nice to talk to you again. And how have you been surviving? How'd you do during the pandemic? Like in terms of college food service, how, how'd you guys handle it? Well, certainly it was unprecedented, the amount of things that we saw and, and what came our way. But you know, as, as I went through, I essentially just used every tool in my toolbox that I had ever uh, learned or earned and worked with before. You know, uh, when we went from 45 employees serving uh, 2,000 people a day, we, um, turned it into uh, four people keeping the place afloat. And, and it was the three, myself and three other salaried managers. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's what we did to get through uh, the thick of the pandemic. And little by little, students started coming back virtually and then actually, and, uh, and, and we came back with a, with a huge amount of uh, gusto opening up new stations. And so things have been very good. Uh, especially when I talk to other universities as well, uh, supply chain issues and, and, uh, and not being able to serve disposables, all the, all the buzzwords and, and staffing, all the things that we've been struggling with uh, as a whole. Right, exactly. And I do want to get more into staffing in a bit, but first I want to go back, since you are a chef to watch, we do a little, little bit of bio biographical information. And I know that you grew up in the Buffalo area, right? We're in the Buffalo area right now. Oh no, that's I know. yeah. So the Sexo is based out of Buffalo in some aspects, but mm -hmm. I'm down in Point Loma, San Diego, California. Oh, the, yeah. fur the furthest south that you, <laughs> that you can go in the continental United States. We're 17 miles from TJ for crying out loud. <laughs> yep. And for those who don't know, that's Tijuana. And <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's the local vernacular. <laughs> Oops. I know TJ. Um, but so you, you are not you're not getting those winters anymore and it was a long time ago in your career because you started out on cruise ships right can you talk a little bit about that oh right right yeah see i grew up in a large family and cooked a lot as i was growing up number seven i was number seven so uh like worked in or is there more there's a, there's one younger child in my family uh, after me. Yeah, there was eight of you. And, and, <laughs> yeah, my parents didn't have enough, and Colleen was adopted, so that was the <laughs> that was the thing. So right, I came from a large family in upstate New York. Loved cooking, and uh, and um, well, I, I fibbed my first chef and told him I was 16 when I was 14, and ended up uh, getting a job at a country club washing his car first and then he let me in the kitchen to start washing dishes he's and uh with the car <laughs> <laughs> he's coming with this guy i had to prove myself in order to uh, in order to get in there uh, at the country club and then uh yeah worked at uh, some large hotels and then uh, and then as soon as i turned 18 i followed suit with my older siblings and he came out to san diego and uh and eventually started working on a, a yacht outfit that's up and down the, the uh, west coast in five ports and then uh uh worked there for 20 years in, in different aspects and capacities so uh love that in the meantime i had my own catering company uh in, in, and uh, then i started teaching culinary arts as well so in a snapshot that's 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 the types of stuff i've done uh and then i was recruited to be into college and university food service so uh, was at san diego state with 30 plus thousand people University of San Diego with five to eight thousand people, and now I'm happily over at 
Point Loma Nazarene University 44 years later. That's how that's, that's how that's happened. <laughs> Very cool. And so working on boats that long, it seems like you, you had your sea legs. Like, does it feel easier? Like when you stopped working, like, on, like, was everything moving around and like, you'd have to grab things or like, I guess on a big cruise ship, it's kind of, it's not really the same. <laughs> we're, we were mostly in the bay uh, okay. and uh, in the mouth of the, uh, the bay to the ocean for the most part, but it definitely taught me how to work in small and cramped places and yeah. spaces yeah. and, and how to bring everything that you need uh, uh, with you because you're just floating out there. And so uh, I became uh, very skilled at workarounds and, and how to, uh, how to, to, how to make product out of, uh, well, when you have to cut the picture off the box and then season that and then put that in the oven, I never did that, but, but, uh, but th th those were resorts. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, it's like everything that you learned, you're using it now. And I wanted to ask about how you're dealing with um, your leadership role leadership. recruiting. Like what's, what have you yeah. been doing with that? Oh yeah, you know, uh, speaking of skills and 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 uh, being um, well, so as I've grown, I've learned that the the kinder, uh, compassionate, and, and gentle chef is the one that retains staff and uh, attracts staff, and and so I spend a, a fair amount of time um, on recruiting uh, and um, making this home, you know, this family, a very lucrative uh, place to work, a place that's sought after to, uh, to work, a place, is, a place where you, you, you know an excellent chef who, who, who has several friends and, and they come along, you know, and so the, the, that, that has kept me from being in the jam. Here in San Diego and in many places uh, across the U.S., you know, places are closing on Sundays and Mondays because they simply don't have staff. You know, I hear these horror stories and, and, and uh, fortunately, uh, I've used uh, many, many venues in order to try to uh, to retain, bring in staff and retain staff. I'm, I'm working with a couple um, places where uh, people have, uh, you know, have a criminal past, for instance, and then they're working with with uh, working with us after passing an extra background. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've, um, I've taught for the last 20 years at a local community college as an adjunct instructor, and so naturally. I teach work experience, and so the yeah. students that I bring in are doing work experience, and the students that uh, that I'm uh, bringing in are aspiring to be good culinarians. And so yeah. that's a huge deal. I've worked with uh, um, organizations that support refugees as well, and so that, that's helped me uh, really fill out uh, an amazing kitchen. So in my kitchens, it's not just uh, different genders, it's people from around the world and their cooking styles that come with them and all those kind of things too. Uh, and when you're nice to people and you give them the time of day and you accommodate their scheduling preferences, uh, you end up you end up having uh, uh, people that stick around uh, for a while and kind of follow you too. So if you do change uh, places, uh, they, they throw on that different jersey and they're ready to go to bat for it. So that, that's been... That's been a, a couple uh, little tricks that I've used to uh, to uh, keep and retain a great, uh, a great group. Yeah, I I love the fact that it's that you're talking about being kinder, being more patient, because and I think that's so important for people to hear who are maybe getting into leadership roles and maybe they feel like, well, I need to come in here like a hard ass and I need to like yell in people's face and like just go crazy. So have you worked in kitchens like that in your life? Or you <laughs> in your face? Yeah, apparently when I started in the 80s, it was legal to throw pans at people and uh, and uh, chase them out of walk-ins if something nefarious was happening and and, and, uh, and several instances pop into my head just saying that. But 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 uh, the and, and I've cooked in France and Spain, you know, and, 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 and as well. And so I've seen like the the levels of competition that can happen yeah. uh, and and how so much energy gets sent into um, how do I compare or compete against this other person versus competing yeah. against the work right and so these days as I as I uh, coach new new culinarians and sometimes uh, experienced culinarians I'll end up you know talking about you know we're not in competition with each other 
we're, we're handling the work that's coming at us. And so, so much less energy gets spent in energy and frustration and worry about, you know, how do I compare against this other person and that kind of stuff. When you take that off of people, that, that commitment of, of uh, what they might believe to be, um, where do I fall in line? Right. When you take when you subtract that, people just get into a pure work mode where you're you're feeding people uh, en masse and, and 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 that's the best expression of a person uh, when they're not so fearful of, of how they fit in, you know, and things like that. So they can they can just purely produce and practice their craft and, and offering people a, a good, safe environment to work uh, where they don't have to worry about all those other things. Uh, it helps them feel free to come in, and, and there's your family. You know, you come into work, and and everyone's everyone's tight. Uh, so the, those are the types of uh, uh, teams that I organize and orchestrate over time, and uh, I'm certainly proud of that. That's definitely my, my, one of my skill sets. Very cool. I mean, I think that 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 is just it's such a good testament of like let's let's treat people nicely in the kitchen. Let's you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's it's the modern way, uh, that, and uh, and it wasn't easy for me in the early days uh, to to get to that point. You know, Tara, I used to if someone showed up four minutes late for work, mm -hmm. I'd send them home and work their shift. You know, and if it was a double or a triple, mm -hmm. I didn't care because it was principle based, right? And I, at one point, I was just like, I gotta stop. Uh, you know, this is hurting me <laughs> right. more than building. A team. So I had to get past that. I was a red-faced chef running around, you know, angry at the world. And this is a whole different version of me than when I wore a younger chef jacket. So that's awesome. I, I think that's really important. <laughs> and I have I have worked with you in the kitchen before. And like for certain culinary events, somebody like me, a journalist, is allowed to come in and cook. Normally that would wouldn't be the case because I don't belong in a mm -hmm. professional kitchen. I'm a good home cook, but I get in the way a lot, but I can yeah. remember that you kind of like actually coached me and gave me some, I was upset about something. I, someone had said something to me and I was, I was like really just in a bad place and you just kind of stopped and you were like, are you going to be able to set this aside and go on with our day? <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and I just remember yeah, that, yeah. it kind of snapped me out of it and I was like, yeah, okay. Okay. And I, I said the same thing to my doctor now, who is almost a teenager. Like she was, there was some, I was like, are you going to be able to, <laughs> and it really, right. like, just right. those little things of relating to people, it really comes from experience for sure. So well, just yesterday, I talked, I talked to an individual who is at the grill, you know, and he came with me from a different university and there was no, there was a, a year or two or semester or two gap, you know, and, and, and he said, you know, the reason I'm here is because of, of this team. And uh, and I wept. You know, oh. That's a very, very, <laughs> it's a very real thing for me. Oh. So I feel what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, and, I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed of that at all. You know, because no. it's, it's like, this is my makeup. This is my DNA, you know. And, and, um, and uh, it sounds cliche, but when you, when you love what you do, it's not work. And, and, and I aspire to... to to be here uh, orchestrating this ship. Isn't that cool? It is. It's very cool. <laughs> and I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to ask a little bit more about um, some of these new stations. Like, what are what are some of the new coolest concepts that you have for this semester? Well, you know, when I got here with Sodexo, we were doing vegan food, but it wasn't really a bona fide, well thought, well planned thing. You know, and it was it was based on our layout. Right. So you always have to match a menu and, and a program to your tools. Right. And so so uh, I knew we could do better. And uh, I brought in a few specialists that, that could, could create vegan foods uh, on, a, on, a, on a dime. And now I'm so happy to say we're actually busier than before the pandemic with four or five hundred extra um, students visiting each each day spread out through the three meal services. But now we're offering a full bona fide uh, uh, vegan program uh, with uh, five week rotating menus. And, and I gotta tell you, when we do our, uh, our cauliflower tacos, 
it's an event and we have like two double-sided stations set up and we're firing the tacos so that they're crisp you know you use a little cornstarch and some frank's hot sauce and some when we, we we go down to a, a place near tijuana to the tortilleria and we buy you know 17 kilos of, of that we put we put the the fresh corn tortillas right inside a cooler to keep them warm if that makes sense and then oh. bring them right to the line and so we're just we're putting these together and the students are so excited. Uh, they roll through, forgive me if this is too much enthusiasm. They, they roll through and they're texting their buddies and they come back and we're just like circling out and, and we've uh, crossed bridges with the difference between ceramics and going disposables at this point. Uh, we still offer some disposables in case someone doesn't feel comfortable dining in our indoors. Uh, but for the most part, the students are just so stoked. And uh, gosh, there was a 34 year supervisor out front uh, who said he'd never even seen that kind of line before and, and the line was just you know dissolving as fast as, as it was uh reforming but uh yeah the, the, that's just a mini, mini example of what, what's going on from the vegan station awesome yeah you know, so much with cauliflower like and when they do like the buffalo <laughs> cauliflower i mean that's yeah, you carve a little hat put it on your head and, and no. uh we we offer <laughs> Sorry, we offer a little uh, a cauliflower uh, steak uh, alternate in our retail area downstairs. So anything that right, yeah. And so I need to bring in the whole cauliflower and cut them just right, and then grill them and get them perfect because because there's a lot of ways to have them imperfect. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so any meat alternate uh, can we can add the cauliflower steak to any sandwich, any wrap, or or you know uh, nice. burger style scenario. So uh, that's worked out well for us as well. Very cool, very cool. And quickly, please talk about um, some of the workarounds that you have done um, for the supply chain. That's still such a big deal. Like it's crazy, right? I got to tell you, it's been it's been incredible because uh, we're ordering, uh, but that doesn't mean whatever you order is just going to show up like the old days, right? Uh, yeah. uh, and if I have five to 800 line items, things I could order between produce and, and, and my broad line provider, there's about 15 annoying things that may or may not show up. And every week, three of those annoying things turn into three other things. And, but there's a core group of things that aren't showing up. And they're like burger patties and pizza shells and, uh, and oil, right? I mean, like really, really real things, right? Yeah. So yeah, we, we've, uh, we're making um, uh, dough from scratch from time to time, right? To, to, to accommodate for that, you know, and, and, and we're doing uh, all sorts, all sorts of workarounds. But the main point about that is like, you have to be on your toes, the order shows up and a, a $25,000 order it looks like eight pallets and two's frozen and two's refrigerated and two's dry or give or take. Uh, but you got to double check everything. And so, and so, uh, so even though a lot of energy is going into that, the receiving, the, the verifying and the put of the way and a couple of trips out to the store, uh, it, it's been, it's been, uh, arduous, but it's also been uh, a way to hone down the talent, you know, and, and, and keep you on your toes as far as that goes. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way because the challenge, uh, isn't simply, do we have this or not? It's what, what do we have that we can make this into or turn this into that? Uh, and so the team accepts the challenge and, and we always try to, to generate a better outcome when something doesn't show up. So, so uh, yeah, and that's just the food aspect. There's also chemical issues <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the, when you don't have chemical for your dish machine, you gotta do something about it, right? And so, so those, are the, those are the types of things that we've been experiencing. And, and uh, they made me stronger, better, and dare I even say smarter. So <laughs> that's a stretch. For you, that's, yeah, that's absolutely what we're looking for. And since you are a chef to watch officially, like we kind of have been watching you for a while anyway, we are gonna be checking in on you, making sure that, that you're doing okay. And let's let's not let it be such a long time before we talk again. Let's, let's stay in touch. Very good. <laughs> for sure. All right. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I've enjoyed this time and uh, and anytime you just come and knock in. I will. <laughs>